Hello guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And in today's video, I'll be looking at all seven of the extensions in the Luminar Neo Extension Pack from 2022. Two. Seven extensions, all add-on products. I'll put a link down below. It is an affiliate link if you'd like to purchase any of them individually or as a group, you can do that. I want to walk through and basically share my stack ranking of these different extensions. Um, I've been playing with them all, looking at them, kind of trying to suss out what I'm going to use, how I'm going to use it, if I'm going to use it, that sort of thing. And so I sort of basically de uh, decided on two criteria for my ranking. The first one is the performance or the results of the extension itself. How fast is it? How accurate is it? How well does it do that whichever it is it's supposed to do? That's the first criteria. The second criteria for me is anticipated frequency of use. In other words, how much am I going to use it or even am I going to use it? And so to be clear, these stack rankings are very personal to me primarily because of that second category, which is anticipated frequency of use. Something that is maybe incredibly useful to me that I use all the time, you might not care about at all and vice versa. So keep that in mind. My ranking is purely personal. Your mileage may vary. Your opinions may vary. This is obviously my opinion. Let's get going coming in and I'm going to start at the bottom just to be clear but coming in at number seven uh, in my stack ranking is the background removal AI I took a look at it and by the way this is an example that I used in that video and I'm going to link to multiple videos from this video if you want to check out individual details about these extensions None of this is a tutorial about specific aspects um, of each extension. So there you go. You just go into layer properties, you click on masking, you click on background removal AI. It does its calculations, it figures out what the subject is, and then it highlights that subject like that. And so my ranking for performance and results, that sort of thing, is a 4.5. And I should pause and say this is a five point scale, one being low or bad and five being high or really good. I give this about a 4.5, and that is because if you look here, there's a tiny bit of cleanup you would have to do in order to get the edges of these feathers and things like that. Maybe the tiny edges of the uh, the claws or whatever it is on the uh, on the webbed feet of this puffin. Not my photo, by the way. I'll put a link to the artist down below. But in terms of performance and results, I give it a 4.5. In terms of usefulness, for me specifically, I only give it a 1. And that's because I just don't do this sort of thing. Like if you do a lot of kind of composite type work, it comes in super handy. That's why I said this ranking is very specific to me, right? I would use it very seldomly to be honest so I give it a one so overall a 4.5 and a one I'm weighting each category the same and so your overall or my overall score for background removal AI is a 2.75 and that's ranking it at number seven in this category Let's go on to number six. Okay, coming in at number six is upscale AI. And you might think, hey, wow, really? That seems kind of low, Jim. And the truth is, I just don't upscale or upsize or resize or whatever you want to call it. I don't really do that very much. In fact, over the last 10, 12 years of being kind of a really active photographer and licensing uh, prints to organizations, uh, companies, and selling individual prints, I've maybe had to do it twice. So it, it doesn't really come up. And so uh, as you can imagine, the usefulness for me ranked pretty low. The usefulness was a two. Now performance and results was actually a 4.5. I think it does a pretty darn good job. If you're not familiar with it, it's an extension that you will get to from the catalog page where you can take an image and drag it over here to upscale and you can go two, four, or six X. And in this case, this is a 3872 by 2592 file. And if I take you over here and take a look at the one that I've upscaled, here it is. You can see the results. Now 7744 by 5184. That was 2x. But what I wanted to do is take a little bit closer look and zoom in on this photo just to show you that I think the results are great. I mean, still crisp and clean and frankly looks great even though I've uh, basically enhanced it in twice uh, twice the size. I could zoom in further and I still have great detail in the eyes and the hair and all that sort of stuff. So again, performance and results, 4.5. But for me, the usefulness was only a 2. I just don't use it. It's not going to come in that um, necessary for me in my day-to-day -day kind of work. Every now and then I'll need it and that's great. I'm super glad to have it. I think it's really cool that it's built in here into uh, Luminar Neo as an extension. I just won't use it a lot. So 4.5 on performance and results, a two on usefulness. So that gives me an overall score of 3.25, ranking it at number six. Okay, now coming in at number five is Magic Lights. And let's just be honest, it's a fun one. The, uh, the overall score that I gave it in performance results Results is a four overall, not quite as high as upscale or background removal. And I want to show you why it shows up over here on the extensions menu, not on the catalog page, but on the edit page. And if you drag intensity, you will see that it takes some of those lights and it just really creates that beautiful starburst effect, which is what it's for. And it does a great job. 
but it doesn't do a perfect job. That's why I gave it a four, because there's a whole, whole lot of lights in this scene, and it doesn't get them all. And I've had a number of emails from people saying, well, what do I do? It doesn't get them all. Well, the only thing I can think to do is to apply it as you would on a photo, export the photo, add it back to Luminar, try again, see if it picks up any different spots, but there's not really a way to force it. And so I would like to see some enhancement here where you could either, uh, where it either automatically detects more spots, which would be ideal, or if there's a way to kind of force it, uh, where you could drop pinpoints of light or something like that. But um, in this case, actually, if it grabbed every one, it would be too much in this photo because there's so many points of light. So in this example, it's actually great for me that it didn't grab them all. But generally speaking, you're probably going to want to add it to more points of light than it may pick up in scenes like this. And so that's why I gave it a three, uh, excuse me, no, I gave it a four overall in performance and results. In terms of usefulness, I gave it a 3.5, which is higher than upscale and background removal, but still might seem kind of low. And again, that's just usefulness in terms of how often am I going to use it? How frequent am I going to apply this effect to photos? It's super cool. It's super fun. I like it. I'll use it some. That's kind of what it comes down to. So it ranks a little bit lower. So a four in performance, a three and a half in usefulness for me gives it an overall ranking of 3.75, ranking it at number five. Okay, coming in at number four is Super Sharp AI. And this is a little bit of a surprise to me because I kind of thought it would rank higher for me overall. But admittedly, I don't sharpen my photos a whole lot. But whenever I use a tool like this, it makes me think I really should be sharpening them more. So overall for me, performance, I gave it a 4.25. And that's, I didn't quite give it four and a half. I wanted to do better than four. So I kind of went for four and a quarter. And the reason why is because it's a little bit slow. Uh, I'm just going to be honest. Um, in this case, I would use universal and I'm going to go to middle and let that apply to the photo. But overall, it does a pretty good job in terms of actually creating that sharpness that I'm looking for. It makes that photo look nice and crisp. But there's a couple of things where I see sometimes it doesn't exactly do exactly what I want it to do. And a couple of times when it might do something that I don't, definitely don't want it to do. So let me zoom in here let me go into like let me go to 600 now if you take a look at these buildings here they're just going to look so they look so much better so that's the before if you look across the facade of all three of those buildings it's kind of soft and this was tripod mounted all that kind of stuff and there they are they look a lot crisper up here as well like this building looks better too there it is before there it is now and like the facade of this building looks i think a lot better so you know there it is before quite a bit softer and there it is now but here's one of the things i didn't really like about this if you look at the before of this string of Christmas lights before Super Sharp AI, and if you look at it now, it's basically changed the shape and basically changed the look of it. So it does some things like that. And I've seen this on walls where it uh, kind of is like slightly alters the pattern a little bit. So that's why overall I'm giving it a 4.25. It does a pretty good job. It definitely makes me think I need to be using it more. Um, so 4.25 in performance and results, but for usability, I gave it a four, and that's, again, personal preference, especially this usefulness category. That's incredibly personal to me, and so your mileage is probably going to vary quite a bit on that. But I'm going to use it a, a decent amount, but I'm not going to use it all the time like I probably am some of the other extensions or other tools that are in Luminar. So overall, a 4.25 on performance and results, and a four on usefulness, and that gives me an overall score for Super Sharp AI of 4.125, ranking it number four. Okay, so coming in at number three for me is actually Noiseless AI, which is a little bit of a surprise. I kind of thought it might be a number two for me, but it's coming in at number three, and there's, there's a main reason why, and that is uh, around the performance and the results. The results are actually, I think, quite good. It's just the performance is fairly slow. Let's just be honest. It's a bit of a resource hog. Um, I like what it does, but I've got a fairly beefy machine and it still takes a little bit of time, longer than I would think it would take, for this tool to run all of its calculations. Um, I remember other tools in Luminar in the past being a bit slow and then they do an update to the product and things speed up. So I definitely anticipate it will get faster over time. But results wise, I think it actually looks pretty good. If you look at the noise here in this portrait, you can see on that wall behind kind of the top of the head and on the foreheads and things like that, fairly noisy. This was ISO 4000. And now you can see that that noise looks quite a bit better. Um, it's reduced it quite well. So I think the results look really good. I think the performance is just a little bit slow. So overall, I gave it a 4.0 on performance and results. Results piece of that was better. Performance piece of that was a little bit slower. Uh, but the usefulness for me is, is fairly high. I gave it a 4.5. 
five. And that's simply because I'll often shoot in a little bit elevated ISO if I'm at an event like this taking portraits or if I'm shooting a street photography, walking around handheld, lower light, which I like to do quite a bit. Noiseless AI comes in super handy for me because I will uh, I will shoot at a higher ISO so I can get those handheld quick snaps in lower light and um, it does a great job there. It's just kind of slow. So usefulness was four, performance and results was, or excuse me, usefulness was 4.5 performance and results was a four, so it gives me overall a 4.25, ranking it at number three. Okay, coming in at number two for me was actually focus stacking. I was surprised. I didn't think I was going to rank it that high, but overall, just the scores in terms of how well it's working is frankly a bit off the charts. If you're not familiar with how you do it, you basically take the same image with different focal points, no other changes to your uh, image, and then you blend them all together. So in this case, I have a photo here where I set up a bunch of different cameras and I focused on one at a time. So in this photo, I focused on this Kodak Duoflex right here in the front. The second one, you can see it's slightly different focal point where this World Atlas and this other camera in the back are a little bit more in focus but like the Nikon and things like that are not. And so I took five or six different photos, stuck them all together, and the result is this one. And you can see here, every single thing is in focus. And so if I zoom in, if you look here, I mean, that camera is in focus all up front. This camera in the back and that book are in focus. This old video camera is all in focus. This Nikon is in focus. Even the edge of this old world Atlas are in focus. And that's the beauty of focus stacking. Now again, as I said, your mileage may, may vary and your opinions may vary, be it, but I, I rank this high in terms of performance and results because the results are fantastic. And the performance is pretty quick. I find it actually quicker than super sharp or noiseless. I find it to be pretty quick at combining images and it's certainly super useful to me. So in usefulness, I also gave it a 4.5. So 4.5 in each category gives it a 4.5 overall for me. Keep in mind, I shoot cityscapes and landscapes, kind of bigger scenes most of the time. Street photography, I'm not going to use this, but I've used it on landscapes in Iceland and some cityscapes here in Austin, and I'm just absolutely loving the results and the ability to do this all within Neo. So overall, it gets a 4.5, ranking it number two. And that leaves number one, which is HDR Merge. You've already figured that out. And honestly, I gave HDR Merge a 5.0 in both categories. I find the performance and the results to be just spectacular. And let's face it, they've got, they being Skylum, the people that make Luminar Neo, they've got DNA for making really good HDR software because they had Aurora HDR for years, which honestly, in my opinion, uh, has, has long been, ever since it came out, has long been the best individual product specific for HDR that I'd ever used, right? And so um, they've got a DNA for that. So I expected HDR Merge to be really, really good in terms of performance, and it is. I know it doesn't have everything that you had in Aurora HDR, but having a, a HDR Merge right here in Luminar plus all the other capabilities in Luminar just gives me an incredibly full featured workflow for HDR or single exposures because I've got all the filters, I've got all the tools, all that together. I just love, and these are just various HDRs. I'm not gonna go through and demo that, but I've been shooting them here in Austin. I shot a bunch in Iceland and I'm just, I'm using it more than I thought I would. And you know, my personal opinion is, a lot of people think HDR is dead, but um, I guarantee you there's a lot of professional photographers that are still doing HDR in some form or fashion. It's just the over-the-top HDR that died, but I would say natural, kind of subtle HDR is going to be around for a long time. Super useful, super uh, good performance and results for me making HDR merge extension number one. So to summarize that, number seven was background removal AI. Number six was upscale AI. Number five was magic lights. Number four was super sharp. Number three was noiseless. Number two was focus stack. And of course, number one is HDR merge. Again, your mileage may vary. These are my opinions based on my experiences. But again, it's very much colored by how much am I going to use the tool, which I talked about for each individual extension. So even if they got a low ranking on that, doesn't mean the tool is bad overall. I think it's super cool that you have all these capabilities and doubly so that it's all in one place, which is for me the big deal for extensions that you can buy in them individually or as a group have all this capability at your fingertips in one product because as you can see over here, I've got my catalog. I've got 246,000 photos in Luminar Neo. I like to have all my stuff in one place and having them all here just really helps me uh, do the things I like to do, do them quickly. And I just love that about extensions. I'm excited to see what comes this year in 2023. But that's my stack ranking of the 2022 seven different extensions for Luminar Neo. 
Hope it gives you some ideas. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave it down below. I'll be back soon, my friends. You guys take care. And until the next video, adios.